that even though we are supposed to believe that there's no such thing as a bad element, that firebenders are douchebags. Everyone and their mama gets killed by a firebender. My mother was killed by a firebender. You lying. You lying because you you need to tell me that, you know, you, your parents never got drowned by waterbenders. Your your parents never got crushed by earthbenders. Like, you never got, like, dehydrated because you know, was walking through the desert and no waterbender gave you no water. Like, seriously, everyone gets killed by firebenders. This has been going on since season one. We need to get some evil you know, earthbender, waterbender people to slaughter in families because this is getting ridiculous. Episode 7 of Legend of Korra, The Aftermath, was kind of meh for me. The first half of the episode is dealing with them trying to figure out what's going on. You know, it's dealing with the aftermath of, as we saw, the destruction of the pro bending ring. We see in kind of like the, the recap scene that Tarlock is blaming Lit, um, Lin Beifong for failing to protect the arena and that saying that she should be removed from her chief position, which I think makes Tarlock look a little bit more suspicious. I know people think that he is Amon. I think he's working with Amon because what he's doing is very like building the blocks and steps towards, you know, kind of taking away people who you know care about the situation, dismantling them. And also it may just be a ploy, if it's not dealing with Amon, but to gain himself more power on the council because he is supposedly being tough on things and giving people what they want, but he always has a scapegoat for somebody else. Um, Korra comes in to see Mako and Bolin, offers them to stay at the Air Temple Island, but Asami is instead invited them to live at her mansion, so they go to live with her instead. Um, Korra is still kind of feeling iffy about Asami at this point. And then we see that, you know, she goes to go see the Beifong and, and Tenzin, and she sees Tano for a second, he's like, you gotta go get the Amon for me to stick my bending away, whatever that he did to me is permanent. And then we see Cabbage Corp has been accused of working with Amon and helping them grow and we see the Cabbage Corporation guy get dragged down. He's like, no, my Cabbage Corp. I'm like, nice shout out guys, nice job. Beifong and Tenzin are trying to figure out who's helping Amon and trying to keep everything down together and Korra goes to see how Bolin and Mako are doing and Bolin is loving the ritzy life, you know, but she's obviously jealous of Mako and Asami's relationship still. But Asami's trying to make friends with her and she takes her to the racing track and Korra and her kind of, they don't, they kind of bond I suppose to a degree. Korra realizes that she's kind of misjudged Asami as being some prissy girl when really she's pretty cool I guess. She can drive cars, she can drive cars really fast and cool but we knew she could drive already. She has a moped but whatever. The fact is I'm glad that they are trying to build a relationship between you know the only two female characters of age. It kind of sucks that you know they're the only two female characters of that age but they're also romantic rivals. Like I wish they could just be friends and not have the Mako thing kind of in between them. That's kind of annoying to kind of see because I like having more female friendships. Cora goes to powder her nose or go use the bathroom after the racetrack. She overhears Hiroshi Sato, Asami's father, saying that you know, now that Cabbage Corp has been taken out of the way, we can strike. And so she assumes that he is talking about taking a strike, like working with the Equalists. So she passes that information over to Tenzin and Bei Fong. And first you see them, then, then you see them come over and, and accuse her, Hiroshi Sato to his face. And Asami's upset, and Mako is blaming chorus feelings for Mako in this situation. I was kind of like, you know, I was like, Mako, you, you really get to that douchebag status right now. Like, you're pissing me off. Like, stop, stop. It's not always about you and, and your feelings. He was like this in the last episode when it was with Bolin. Like, stop. I know this is about you. Like, calm your ass down. Chloe, that's childish. Well, most. So when they're leaving, they don't find anything because he says that the whole Cabbage Corp strike is a business thing, not anything political. And so I mean, kind of says like, just because we're not better doesn't mean we said with those equalists and whatever. It's kind of like, that's nice. Cora gets a note sent to her that says if she wants to know the truth about what's going on, to meet him under the Silk Road Bridge. So her, Tenzin, and, and Beifong go together. And he tells them that there is a secret factory underneath the Hiroshi Sato mansion. So they come in with a crew of, of metal benders, and Asami's like, this is impossible, this can't be happening. Then, using her kind of seismic detect that she learned from her mom, hey, 
um, she's discovered that there's a factory underneath the mansion that no one knew about. It saw me kind of like, I don't understand. And this is when the episode gets good, because up to this point it's kind of like, uh, whatever. Like, it, it was very, I'll get into that later about how I felt about it, but then we go in and we see that he's building these new machines, and they kind of look like mechas, basically. They're, they're like little mechas, and they can be used to like grapple and stuff, and they're made of platinum so that they can't be um, bent like um, metal benders, and there's a shout out to talk about how, how amazing she is, but even she couldn't bend metal this pure. Um, and then the fight breaks out, and the lieutenant there, Amon's lieutenant is there, but um, Korra and Tenzin and Bayfront all get defeated, but we do get to see Tenzin finally like airbend for more than like two frames so that was really good and he was kicking ass and Cora I like Cora like doesn't use a lot of ver for um variety in her bending like and she doesn't even use like her main thing which is water like she whatever she bends she mostly uses fire like she's not really that intensive of a water bender but because she doesn't carry like a water skin like Katara used to so her default bending is like mostly fire which I think is interesting considering her character how that's her default is to be like fire and earth instead of doing water and, and air which she should naturally be better at but it seems she kind of gravitates more towards fire bending and earth bending and the more aggressive um, bending styles but they get defeated. Mako and Bulin get kind of concerned about what's going on. They tell Asami to stay there, and the two of them go to help the rest of the gang. And they, and he, they see them knocked out, and they try to, like, take them out. But Hiroshi and them see them, and they're going to stop them. And he talks about how, like, you know, even though he supported the fire ferrets and everything, it was just being done to help things move along. The worst part was seeing his daughter with a street rat. Street rat, I don't buy that. Only they'd look closer. And then Asami comes in and he explains about how, like, you know, the firebenders killed your mother, the love of my life, and this is the only way things can be equal. And they try to fake you out to make it think like Asami's gonna turn evil, but then she just shocks her father and, like, kind of beats up this other guy. They they all just manage to escape together in the in one of the blimps. And Beifong... Beifong's men have been captured. Some of them have been captured by um, by the Chi blockers, so their brain is going to get taken away. So she decides that she's going to resign from the task force and go after Amon on her own terms outside the rules. So she's going to be like a renegade badass. I'm just like, hell yeah. Um, and then now Mako, Bolin, and Asami are all going to be living with Korra at the Air Temple Island. And that's kind of the setup for what's going to happen later. This episode is like a setup for things to come. So I feel like it's not really, it's not a great episode, but it sets up great things, you know? I feel like, like, I'm a little disappointed that Sami's not evil, but I hope that they will still find a way to develop her character. Because her character has not been developed. Like, I'm sorry. You brought this girl in, and all you've done is make her, make her Mako's girlfriend, and all we, and now we know that her mom is, her mom is dead, so she's like every other character in this goddamn series. Like, that's not special. The fact that she can drive is something that we already knew, the fact that she can drive really fast is interesting. But what about her? What about more about, what about more what she feels? I mean, we only know it in connection to, you know, M Mako and her dad. What about who she is? And like, we don't really get that about her, so I wanted her, her, her character to be explored. Lynn was great. I love when she was going Wolverine on that one mecha thing. I was like, yeah! Ch -ch -ch -ch. I was like, yes, I love this chick. She's still giving me life right now. But overall, yeah, I mean, I, I guess my problem with this episode was kind of like, once it was getting into what was going on, like, Okay, this will either go one of two ways, and it did, and it was like, it was so predictable, because you knew, like, when they were doing the whole thing with Sato, I'm like, okay, this, he's, either him or Asami is gonna be the one doing this, and it was the father, and it was kind of like, well, there you go. Like, it, it wasn't surprising, and people had been already, you know, debating this, and thinking about this, and analyzing this, so I feel like, because, like, I feel like if you're just a casual watcher, it probably was more surprised, but if you're kind of like a person who's been, like, analyzing the crap out of the show, and all kind of stuff and theorizing is kind of like well you know it's gonna be either one of the two so that was kind of like a drag and I wish we had gotten to see more Amon more stuff like that this kind of episode was just kind of like with all the intensity and gravity of what's going on the fact that they can just take these little breaks 
to like do this little bullshit. Like it, that's something that used to annoy me in the actual in the first series. But like the first half of this episode really could I couldn't connect with it that well. But the ending I liked because there was setting stuff up for what's gonna happen later. You see Asami now she's gonna have these conflicting things. How is she gonna side with that? Then you have Korra and her feelings for Mako, but also trying to support Asami, who's kind of her new friend. But Lin's kind of not developing at all right now. He's getting to the corner just being the funny guy, telling like really crappy jokes sometimes. Um, and then you got Bay Fong who's going to be going in her whole, like, Zorro, Daredevil, Batman, Spider-Man, Vigilante ass over there. Then you got Tenzin who's just going to be dad. And, you know, I like, at this point in the series, I'm like, I still like it, I still enjoy it, but I'm also just kind of like, okay, can we, can we, can we, can we just keep it going now? Because, like, other reviews have brought up about, like, the pro bending stuff, holding stuff back. And before I didn't feel that way, but now I'm kind of like, you know, we're on episode 7. And out of, you know, 12 for the, for this season, I'm like, we gotta get, we need to go somewhere. We need to go there soon. You don't have time to putz around. You don't have time to, you know, have the little fun camp out episodes. Because you don't have that time to set that pace. So I hope that from now on, they'll focus more on the story and building up these characters. So that at the end of the show, we actually care about who these people are. Because it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. It's not bad. It's like, it needs to be more.